Can you bring the picture up for me, Delma? I thought Elizabeth was going to be there. Where is Elizabeth? <laughs> Need a picture up there. Yeah. There we go. I wanted to uh, start the message today with a photograph. If, uh, if you were part of the South Main family of faith early on, you will recognize the couple in this picture. The photograph was taken by someone many of you know, uh, Craig Johnson, who's also been a part of this family of faith. It was snapped uh, one Thursday evening at Carolina Wren Park, downtown Anderson, during the weekly block party, which happens there in the warmer weather months, every Thursday night, complete with music, and for some, dancing. <laughs> the picture captures a moment in the life of these two persons. The kind of moment that I hope we all have many of them. You know, we really can't manufacture such moments. They just come to us. I guess we might say they are a gift, a serendipity, an unearned blessing. These moments are sprouts of grace that poke up in the garden of our lives sometimes when we least expect it. God's light shines upon us and even through us in moments like these. Some people would pay a whole lot of money for a moment like that. If today we went to the convenience store and bought a Powerball ticket, and tomorrow evening, when the numbers are drawn, we scan down the ticket, and every one was a match. Now that would be a moment, right? <laughs> but it would not be nearly as precious as a moment like this. Amen. While we cannot see the face of the woman in the picture, the face of the man says all we need to know. Here before us are two people who have found love. Amen. Or maybe love has found them. In that moment, caught for us on Kodak Extra Life photographic paper. In that moment is joy and peace, and love, and light. What's the saying? A picture is worth a thousand words. Now the two people in this photo lived what many of us would say was far from a perfect life. Rick Noak, and Becky Earhart were our neighbors here at South Main. They attended church here on a regular basis for about four or five years. Rick, you may remember, had a deep, <clears throat> resonant bass voice. Uh, he could have been a radio announcer. He sang in our choir and he sometimes would lead our prayers of the people. Becky was quiet and kind. And like so many of us here, she loved her dogs, which she had way too many of them. 
like some of us here. <laughs> Rick was a veteran of the U.S. military, and he was proud of his service. He was thoughtful and generous and patient most of the time. And I was reminded this morning that there was a dear, sweet, elderly woman, Lily Waters, who lived in this neighborhood, who Rick and Becky regularly looked after. Rick and Becky lived the whole time that I knew them in an abandoned house on North Hammond Street. After a fire at the house, they, for a time at least, used a shed in the backyard. They both struggled with the condition of addiction called substance use disorder in the clinical manuals. In the last two years of their lives, we did not see them as much here as we did earlier. Their contact with us was sporadic. I reconnected with them when Becky got sick and she had to be hospitalized. Rick stood faithfully by her side for all the many weeks she spent in intensive care at AnMed Health. When she died, I offered, but Rick did not want a public memorial service. Instead, he came by my office one morning and we spent a couple hours just remembering and grieving. A few months later, Rick died in the abandoned house, a house they called home on North Hammond Street. To the best of my knowledge, no one claimed their ashes. This morning, this picture will be included in the video of our roll call of saints, along with some others who, like Rick and Becky, found that the struggles of life could not be kept under wraps, and at times made some very disappointing and life-destroying decisions. Some might ask or wonder, what place do folks in such a condition have in an All Saints Sunday service? That question was answered for me when I went to the lectionary scriptures selected for us for this very day. In the Gospel reading for All Saints Day, Jesus answers the question, of who is on the roll call of the kingdom that he came to announce. Luke records, as do others, that Jesus turns the tables when it comes to defining saints and sinners. Jesus tells us the eternal blessings of God's kingdom life are awarded to saints who may surprise us. Jesus says, when the roll is called up yonder, first to be heard answering here will be folks who have struggled in this world something awful. There's nothing in Jesus' words about checking the right boxes on the screening tests of religious doctrines. The measures of success and happiness often promoted in this world, things like wealth and status and power, don't seem to help out one bit. In fact, when it comes to getting on that roll, they may get in the way. This is who is on the roll call of saints, according to Jesus. He says... It says, then Jesus looked up at his disciples and said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you will be filled. 
Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you, and when they exclude you and revile you and defame you on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy, for surely your reward is great in heaven, for that is what their ancestors did to the prophets. Yes. But woe, woe to you who are rich, oh, Lord. for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are full now, for you will be hungry. <laughs> Woe to you who are laughing now, for you will mourn and weep. Woe to you when all speak well of you, for that is what their ancestors did to the false prophets. But I say to you that listen, are you listening? I say to you, love your enemies. Yes. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. And pray for those who abuse you. If anyone strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. Amen. And from anyone who takes away your coat, do not withhold even your shirt. Amen. Give to everyone who begs from you. And if anyone takes away your goods, do not ask for them again. Do to others as you would have them do to you. That is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. This week, I was challenged with the question, and I challenged myself to give thought to some bigger questions, like, what's next beyond this life? And how do we prepare for it? I wish I could stand here this morning in this pulpit and give you ironclad answers about the nature of of the afterlife. The truth, as I find it in this book, says God leaves much of that area shrouded in mystery, forcing us to live with many unanswered questions and calling us to walk by faith and not sight. But this I do know, Whatever is next, it is going to look and feel and sound a whole lot like what was captured in that photograph. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Moment after moment, an eternity of moments filled with joy and peace and love and light. Yes. No more crying and sadness, no more fear and despair, for death will be defeated. How do we prepare for what's next? Trust. Jesus teaches his disciples to trust in God's grace. Yes. <laughs> Jesus says, trust in grace enough to live content with what you have. Yes. Trust in grace enough to love your enemies, not work for their destruction. <clears throat> Trust in grace enough to pray, to pray for those who do you wrong, rather than revenge them. Amen. Trust in grace enough to treat all others the way you would like to be treated. Trust in grace enough to get through the hungry times and the sad times and the empty times with the confidence that something much, much better is waiting ahead. And in the end, God will make all things well. In just a moment, we're going to watch a video 
go ahead and key it up if you want. With some photos of folks who today we remember as bringing us light and love. Now we know this is only a small sample of the great cloud of witnesses. The communion of saints, as the Bible says. As I say in the bulletin, those whose photos are not here in this video, we still picture them in our hearts. At the end of the video, I'm going to share a song that speaks of the hope. The hope that in eternity, relationships which have shaped and blessed our lives so richly on this side of the river will one day be renewed on the other side, for we will meet again.